Hello everybody and welcome to your linear algebra review on Gauss-Jordan elimination with infinitely many solutions. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Now if you haven't seen my previous videos on Gauss-Jordan elimination with one solution or even my, my Gaussian elimination series with two and three variables, please check those out. They provide a lot of much needed context for what I'm about to do. In this video I'm basically just going to be getting my matrices in reduced row echelon form and then finding the solutions to my system of equations. Okay. Uh, so for this first uh, system, I will be showing the full process, starting with your matrix, how to get it into reduced row echelon form, um, and then how to solve it. For these two down here, I'm just going to put the matrix in reduced row echelon form. I won't be showing the steps. Um, and then from there, show how to get the solutions from that reduced row echelon form. So first things first, always. Uh, let's start with this first system and we got to put it into matrix form. Now, don't be tricked with this matrix. Notice how in the second row, we've swapped the variables x2 and x1. So it shouldn't look like 10, negative 5, negative 15 in the matrix. It should look like negative 5, 10, negative 15. Don't let us trick you, okay? We, we swap these two variables around. So the coefficients should be swapped. Okay, so now to get this in reduced row echelon form, first step, get a one in the top left position right there. We wanna get a one there. Um, and how to do that, we, we simply divide by four. So we take one fourth of our first row, we get one, negative two, three, and then the bottom row stays the same. And now how do we, how do we get a zero down here in the bottom left? Well, we take row two plus five times row one. So row one stays the same. Row two, so we're going to take negative five plus five times one. Five times one is five plus negative five gives us that zero. Then we're going to take 10 plus five times negative two. Five times negative two is negative 10. 10 plus negative 10 is zero. And then we're going to take negative 15 plus five times three. Five times three is 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is zero. So we get a row of all zeros. Um, so typically then what the next step would be would be to get a one in this position, right? Uh, but that's not possible because it's a zero. Um, if, we, if we tried adding it to the first row to get a non-zero number there, then we'd mess up this zero. If we tried multiplying by a scalar, we couldn't change the zero. Um, obviously we don't want to sw swap the rows because we want our row of zeros to be at the bottom. So we're, we're at the end. This matrix is now in reduced row echelon form. So now the process of finding the solutions, this is the trickiest bit. So what you do is first look for your leading coefficients. So those are the first non-zero entries in your row. So for instance, in the first row, that is a leading coefficient. In the second row, we don't have any leading coefficients because it's all zeros. Okay. So remember each of these columns here symbolize our variables. Like this first column symbolizes sort of X1, right? It's like the coefficients in front of X1. And the second column here really symbolizes x2. So we're saying x1 has a leading coefficient. So what we would call x1, we'd call x1 a lead variable. Uh, or in some classes, you might call it a pivot. Okay, lead variable or pivot. That's what we'd call x1 because it has a leading coefficient. Now x2, no matter what row you look at, the first row or the second row, does not have a leading variable. So x2 is what we would call a free variable. Okay, because there's no leading coefficient in its column in any of the rows, we call it a free variable. And there's a reason for that. The idea is that x2 is allowed to be whatever it wants to be. It's free to be whatever it wants to be. So when we're going to try to solve this system, what we do is we just set x2 equal to some arbitrary variable. So let's say x2 equals t. Okay, so it's free to be whatever it wants to be. So we're just going to give it another variable name. Let's call it T. And now our goal is to solve for our lead variables in terms of those free variables. So X1, if we, if we were to look at this first row right here, right? It's saying one X1 minus two X2s equals three. That's what that first row says. And substituting T in for X2, we get X1 equals, oops, sorry we get x1 minus 2t equals 3. 
And then adding that 2t over, we get x1 equals 2t plus 3. So this is our solution, that x1 equals 2t plus 3 and x2 equals t. And if we were to put that into a vector, so if we were to put x1, x2 into a vector, what we can do, this is what our solution would look like, we can actually split this vector apart. We can gather all of our t's together and all of our constants together. So like if we look at this, this first bit, how many two t's do we have? We have two t's. How many constants do we have? We have that plus three at the end. Then we look at our next row, how many t's do we have? We have one t. How many constants do we have? Zero. So this is what uh, the, the parameterized form of our solution looks like. So notice our solution is dependent on some unknown variable t. So what we're saying is that no matter what real number you plug in for t, if you plug in one, if you plug in 12 billion, if you plug in pi, if you plug in negative square root of two, no matter what value you plug in for t, you're going to get a solution to your equation. And we can even test that. Let's test that right now. Let's test that right now. Let's say, let's say if t equals one. So if t equals one, using, using these formulas, we get that x1 would have to be two times one plus three. So x1 is five and x2 would equal one. So we're claiming that, that x1 equals five and x2 equals one is a solution to the system. So if we plug it in, let's, let's, let's plug it in. So we have four times x1 minus eight times x2. So four times five is 20, eight times one is eight, 20 minus eight is 12, which is what it should be. And then if we plug it into the second row, we have 10 times x2, so 10 times one, minus five times x1. So that's 10 times one is one, five times five is 25, 10 minus 25 is negative 15, which again is what it should be. So if we plugged in t equals one, we got a valid solution to our system. And this holds for any real number. If you plug in t equals 1,000, plug in t equals negative pi, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a solution. That's why this system has infinitely many solutions because there's infinitely many choices for t. Okay, and this, this, this equation here, this vector times t plus another vector, this shows you how to find every one of those solutions. Just plug in different values for t. So this is what your final answer would be, this, this parameterized equation that depends on this variable t. And for each value of t you plug in, you get a solution. That's the idea with infinitely many solutions, okay? So let's see it in action with the, the next two examples. So I'm gonna clear our work here. So again, I'm just going to show you what the reduced row echelon form of these matrices is. Um, so first I'll, I'll write what the matrix is. So it's negative three, 12, negative four, augmented with negative eight. It is negative one half, uh, two negative one half, augmented with negative one. And it is two negative eight, uh, two augmented with four. And then if we reduce row echelon form it, we're going to end up getting, let me find it real quick. We're going to end up getting one, negative four, zero, augmented with zero, 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 one, two, and zero, 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 zero. That's what the reduced row echelon form of this looks like, okay? So say we do the same process, right? We look for our leading coefficients, so that's the first non-zero entry in each row. That's non-zero and that's non-zero. And then we remember each of these columns sort of represents a variable, right? Like the first column is our X variable, second column is our Y, third column is our Z. So because the X column and the Z column have a leading coefficient in front of them, X and Z are our leading coefficients or sorry, our leading variables. And because y does not have a leading coefficient in its column, y is a free variable. Okay, once you have your free variable, you know what to do. You set your free variable equal to some other variable, let's call it t, and then you don't want to solve for, for your leading variables in terms of that variable. So looking at our first row, we have x, 1x minus 4y is equal 0. Substituting t in for y, we get x minus 4t equals 0, which means x equals 4t. And then if we look at our, our second row, we have 1z equals 2. 
So there's no, no, not even any t's involved in that one. We just have z equals two. So our parameterized solution looks like x equals four t, y equals t, and z equals two. So then putting that in vector form, we have x, y, z. And then what we do, remember, so we gather all of our, our terms with t variable, and then we gather all of our constants together. So x is four t's with no constants, y is one t with no constants, and z is no t's with two constants. That's what our solution looks like. Okay. So the, the big deal with infinitely many solutions, find your free variables, set them equal to some other variable, and then solve for your lead variables in terms of that free variable. That's, that's the process. Okay, let's do it one more time with this matrix down here. So what the matrix looks like is it's four, one, negative five, 14 augmented with three. It's one, one, four, two augmented with zero. And now if we, if we REF it, so if we reduce row echelon form, it looks like, pull it up. It looks like one, zero, negative three, four augmented with one. It looks like zero, one, seven, negative two augmented with negative one. Okay, so same process. We look for our, our lead variables. That's, um, sorry, our lead coefficients. That's the, the ones, the first non-zero entry in each row. So we get that x1 and x2 are our lead variables. That means x3 and x4 are our free variables. What we do with free variables is we set them equal to some other arbitrary variables. So we'll set x3 equal to, let's say, um, s, and we'll say x4 equal to, let's say, t. So because we have two free variables now, we have two separate things we're working with. We're working with an s and we're working with a t. And then we, um, we, we take these equations that we have here. So that's 1x1 minus 3x3s plus 4x4s equals 1. Substituting in our variables and then solving for x1. So that's what x1 looks like. And then for x2, uh, we look at our second row. So we have x2 plus 7 x3 minus 2x4 equals negative 1. Subbing in the variables for x3 and x4, plus 7s minus 2t equals negative 1. And then solving for x2, negative 7s plus 2t minus 1. So this is what x2 looks like, this is what x1 looks like, and this is what x3 and x4 look like. So then tossing all of that into a vector, we have um, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And again, we, we organize our vectors by the variables. So we're going to look at all of the s components we have, all of the t components we have, and then all of the constants we have. So looking at x1, this is the equation for x1, right? How many s's do we have? We have three. How many t's? We have negative four. And how many constants? We have plus one. Then we look at x2. How many s's do we have? Negative seven. How many t's do we have? Two. And how many constants? We have negative one. And then we look at x3 and x4. So x3 has one s and nothing else. And x4 has one t and nothing else. This is what our solution looks like. Okay. So sometimes you can have several free variables. Like in this case, we had x3 and x4 were free. And because of that, we, we had to parameterize our equation in terms of two variables. Okay. Cool. So that's the whole process. Um, thank you all for watching. On this next slide here, we have additional resources. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I work with the ASU tutoring centers. Um, so if you're looking for uh, any of the free resources that we provide on all four campuses and online, check out tutoring.asu.edu. If you want more videos like this one that go over specific concepts from your course, or maybe you want to see um, what upcoming review sessions we have, go ahead and check out um, this link right here. Wonderful. Thank you again uh, and have a wonderful day.